There are different ways a person can know someone. You can know objective facts about them, what color their eyes are, whether or not they've had their appendix out, stuff like that. Or you can know them personally, what their passions are, what makes them tick, what that funny look they sometimes get on their face means without them having to tell you. You can know a lot about a person in that first way without ever coming to know them in this second way. Theologians sometimes differentiate between two different ways of understanding the Trinity, too. We can use the Trinity as a way of talking about what God is like in his inner life, or we can use the Trinity to describe how God relates to us in a personal way. The word ontological describes this first way of understanding the Trinity. Ontological means having to do with one's essence or being, and the ontological trinity is a way of trying to describe what you might see if you could open a window on heaven and peek into God's throne room. God as God is, in and of himself. The phrase economic trinity describes this second way of understanding the trinity. The economic trinity is a way of talking about how God is at work and has been at work in the world. In creation, in world history, and in our personal lives, God in relationship with us. Think about it like this. As the Son of God, Jesus taught his followers to pray to God as our Father who art in heaven. And if we take him at his word and do pray like this, it's only because the Holy Spirit has confirmed the truth of Jesus' teaching in our hearts. In other words, we come to know God as the Father through the Son by the Holy Spirit. The story of Jesus' baptism shows us the same thing from a slightly different angle. John the Baptist baptizes Jesus, and then it says, As he was coming up out of the water, the Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove, and a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Again, God reveals himself as Father, through the Son, by the Holy Spirit. Our relationship with God has this same Trinitarian shape going the other direction. Take prayer, for instance. Often when people pray, they feel alone and kind of inadequate, like their words are just bouncing off the ceiling. Yet the Bible teaches that when Christians pray, the Holy Spirit actually puts the prayer of Jesus in our hearts, who mediates for us as our great high priest, bringing our prayers to the Father in his perfect prayer. It's never us just praying to God on our own. We pray to the Father, through the Son, by the Holy Spirit. Or take worship. Because we're flesh and blood human beings, we never really give God the glory he deserves. Yet Jesus, who was fully God and fully human, poured out his sinless life as a perfect act of worship on our behalf. And when we believe in him, the Holy Spirit unites our lives with his life, so that our worship is offered with his perfect worship to the Father, through the Son, by the Holy Spirit. A lot of Christians don't get especially excited about the church's teaching about the Trinity because they tend to think of it in terms of that first way of knowing God, cold objective facts about what God is like in and of himself, and they don't think about it in this second way as the very bedrock of our whole relationship with God. But that's what it is. It's how we know God, how we're able to know God, and it's how we live with God. For a Christian, prayer, worship, ministry, service, discipleship, all of it is only possible by the grace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good morning, and welcome home to Christ Church. Wonderful, good to see so many people. And welcome to any who might be here for the first time. It's really good to have you here. And do please stay on afterwards. Come into the hall afterwards and have some refreshments and some conversation. Everything you need is on the screen. The words that I say and that you can join in with are on the screen. The words in yellow are what I say and the words in white we say all together. A special welcome to those who might have travelled quite a distance to be here, especially those from the Brighton Stroke Worthing area. Because today I'm, I'm delighted to say that Andrew Downs, who is going to be ordained next month as our curate, and his family, Kim, um, Enna, and Toby, are here with us today. So do you want to give us a, a quick wave from where you are, guys, at the back there? Give them a, give them a welcome. That's where we are. Excellent. So do you have a chat with Andrew after this series, and Kim, and Toby, and etc., and Enna, and, and do you get to know them? You'll see them around the next few weeks. And if you want to, you are more than welcome to come to Andrew's ordination service on the 2nd of July. That's a Saturday morning at 10.30 at Blackburn Cathedral. We've got 30 tickets, first come, first serve. Come and support Andrew and family. Come and uh, be part of our service at Blackburn. It's one of Bishop Ju Julian's last, well, it's Bishop Julian's last ordination before he retires. So you, you're most welcome, but only 30 of you can come, okay? Because there's many people being ordained at the same time and we all have an allocation of tickets. So do come and support Andrew. 
But the following day, on the Sunday afternoon, on the 3rd of July, at 1 o'clock, we're going to have a, a welcome buffet in the hall. And so, again, you can come to that. You know, don't bother cooking lunch that day. Lunch is on me that day. All right, come to the hall and enjoy the buffet and welcome officially Andrew and his family. So, so welcome to you. And at the front here, Mike, give us a wave. This is Mike Chesterton. And Mike is here from a charity called Home for Good. Some of you who came to the production a few weeks ago, the My Place production by Riding Lights Theatre Company, might recognise Mike because Mike gave a presentation about the work of Home for Good. And today is part two, continuing to share about what Home for Good does. So I won't say any more about that because Mike will share that a little bit later. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth. And draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The prophet Isaiah, in chapter 6 of the Bible, has these words, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. That was the words of the angels praising God, the seraphim and the cherubim. So let us now praise our God, one God in three persons. We stand to sing, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. <laughs> seated. Well, God is perfect in power, in love and purity, but our live stream isn't today <laughs> because uh, there's a delay on our words. So I'm very sorry if you're trying to remember the words of the hymn and hoping the words come on soon. It's just what happens is um, at the back there, there's a delay, there's a lag, and so they have to guess, like press the button and five seconds later it comes on. And um, it's just a new problem we've encountered the last few weeks, so we're trying to solve it. We spent a lot of time during the week, so my apologies for that. Uh, but that's why it's good if you can bring an order of service that you've printed off at home, or use your phone um, and, and, and look at it digitally, that's quite useful. Just, just bear with us, my apologies for that. 
let's now come before God, mindful that we are not perfect like he is perfect. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We long for the fire of God's cleansing to touch our unclean lips, for our guilt to be removed and our sin wiped out. So we meet Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with repentance in our hearts. We pray together, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, for our own deliberate thought. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our special prayer for today, our collect for this Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of a divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So in a moment, we're going to watch a video on the screen explaining an introduction about Home for Good. Here at Home for Good, we have a bold vision to find a home for every child who needs one in the UK through fostering, adoption and supported lodgings for teenagers. And we believe the church has a crucial role to play. There are over 50,000 churches in the UK. In every village, town and city, there are churches, big, small and in between, filled with people who want to follow the example of Jesus. When we read the Bible, it's impossible to ignore the fact that this is an issue close to God's own heart. Psalm 68 tells us that God sets the lonely in families. Through our resources, content and training packages, we practically equip individuals and families as they explore fostering, adoption or supportive lodgings. We mobilise churches and communities to better welcome, understand and support individuals and families who love and raise care experienced children. We are parents to three children through birth, one child through adoption and one child through fostering. We attended a question conference where we heard a Home for Good speaker and that was really the point where we started to consider seriously what our part could be. From that we became Home for Good champions and we've really seen growth within our church just from that and using resources from Home for Good. Um, and I've been connected to peer support groups which has really, really helped us on our journey. Home for Good is a national charity with a local mission. We have team members and volunteers across England, Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland working on the ground to inspire the local church, build partnerships and ultimately find homes for the thousands of children who are waiting. Our impact is growing and everyone has a part to play. But we don't just work at the local level. We are committed to creating systemic change from the top down. We build a bridge between those whose voices are too often ignored and those who have the power to enact real change. Imagine the transformational difference the church could make if even more individuals and families in our own congregations opened up their homes for children and young people. Imagine the impact if church communities wrapped around those who care for vulnerable children with love, encouragement, prayer and practical support. Home for Good is driven by a vision that together we can find a home for every child who needs one. 
And I wonder, what part could you play? Secondly, we inspire people to explore the possibility of fostering or adoption. We equip and support them as they journey towards welcoming a child into their home. Uh, we're not a fostering or adoption agency. We don't have children to place. Uh, we're a bridge, if you will. We're a friend to journey with you as you go through that process. We're there to plant the seed. We're there to help you to explore. And then if and when you decide that's the right thing for you to do, we'll journey with you through that process. who foster or adopt and equip them to make church a welcoming and supportive place uh, for those families and children. That's a practical thing in a lot of ways. Um, if I could tell you one story, uh, there, there was a, a couple that we were, we were working with uh, who had two birth children uh, and then they fostered children who were, um, uh, had quite significant needs uh, and additional needs. And so crisis was a daily occurrence in their household. What that meant was that their two birth children quite often were sat outside uh, after school clubs, church youth group, uh, activities that they'd done waiting for a ride home uh, and, and parents didn't arrive because they were dealing with crisis at home. So two families in their church decided they were going to do something about this uh, and they gave the children their telephone numbers and they said if this ever happens we'll be your plan B. Uh, just pick up the phone uh, and we'll drop what we're doing and we'll come and we'll pick you up so that you don't have to uh, sit outside like that. could tell you loads and loads of other stories like that. But it's just about thinking through what we can do to make uh, the lives of these people uh, far easier and manageable. Then lastly, as you heard Tarn say on the film there, we advocate at all levels of government to work to make policies better for children in care. Um, there's going to be some, uh, uh, have we got a PowerPoint at this point, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. There's going to be some, um, uh, some uh, pictures coming up on the screen here um, of just some things that we've done recently. So we were instrumental in forming the all-party parliamentary group on adoption and permanence, and we still provide uh, research and administrative support to that group. Um, we've recently been asked to contribute to the review of uh, children's social care uh, in both England and in, recently in Northern Ireland as well. Uh, and uh, the report that came out, I think it was last week from, uh, in England, uh, we were really pleased to see that Home for Good was quoted on several occasions in that, um, where we had inputted into that process. And as part of those reviews, uh, we've just partnered with our friends from Safe Families as well uh, to write a report which highlights the massive potential uh, of engaging with the church for these, these different agencies and authorities. Thank you, Mike. So that's a great just taster, isn't it, of the work that's going on. How can we pray for Home for Good and for the situation you've explained? The obvious thing is, is more people to step forward into fostering uh, or adoption, and, and please do pray for that. But maybe this month uh, we could be praying for more people and churches to offer that practical support to people who already foster uh, or have adopted. Uh, can we also pray for more support groups? Support groups, peer-to-peer -peer support groups are really, really important. Uh, they, if you're fostering and adopting, um, you know that... Uh, the people who really understand you and what you're going through are, are other people who have fostered and adopted. And, and so therefore to get together with them and to have support from them uh, is great. And we'd love to see our network of peer support groups grow. So please pray for people who will step forward uh, to organise and lead those. Thank you. And actually that's one of the things we're looking to start here, isn't it? So I've chatted to Mike and we have a, a few mums, part of our church community, um, and not just mums, so mums and dads, but mums who come to our Playhouse toddler group who already foster or adopt. And so we're going to set up a group um, under the umbrella of Home for Good, which will support um, foster parents, adopted parents in their journeys with their uh, children. So that'll be where we can practically help, won't it? You mentioned about, was it 610 children in care in the Blackpool Authority. Yeah, that's right. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and that's like, you know, and you said 67 is across the whole country and 200 and something. 210. Yeah, so that's like, what, four times as many? Three and a half. Three and a half, times. four times. So right now, this morning, 610 children in Blackpool didn't wake up in a permanent home. Just think about that. Think about your childhood. Um, the majority of us, I'm guessing, would have woken up in a permanent home. Not all of us, but 
610 children haven't woken up in, a, in an ordinary home with a mum or dad downstairs saying good morning in a place that they will know will be their same home again the week after. So let's pray for that situation and for what Mike has shared. Living God, you are so good to us. You demonstrate what a father and son relationship looks like. You demonstrate what family is between father, son and spirit. Help us, almighty God, as your people here on earth, as your hands and feet, to do all we can to help with this need. Help us provide that wraparound care to families who might feel called to adopt and foster. We pray, Lord, for more families to come forward, more individuals or parents or families to come and offer their support, whether it be to look at the process of adoption or fostering or supporting those who do. We pray for each of those children this morning who haven't woken up in a permanent home. Almighty God, would you change their plight? Would you transform their circumstances? And through even this morning and Mike's work throughout the Northwest, would we start to see that statistic change because of the transformation power of God? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Mike's going to come up again shortly and, uh, and lead us in, in reflecting on God's word. But for now, we're going to um, look at God's word before we hear Mike speak. So I'm going to invite Sandra to come forward. And Sandra's going to read to us from the scriptures. So please do come forward, Sandra. I can leave it there. Yes. That's all right. Got to be better at height, isn't it? Sandra's going to read from um, Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 16. Found on page 809. Page 809. If you're able to, let's stand together as we hear God's word read. Matthew 5, verses 1 to 16. It's entitled, The Sermon on the Mount. Seeing the crowds, he went up onto the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before them. Before you, sorry. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, and shall its saltiness be restored, it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And this is the word of God. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Sandra. And Mike's going to come forward now and speak to us. Let's pray together, shall we? Father God, I just pray that you will speak to us now. Uh, come and inhabit this place uh, and help us to grasp hold of what it is you're saying to us. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being here. We thank you for the privilege of being part of your army that challenges and changes the world in which we live. And we pray now that you will show us again afresh our part in that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's really great to be with you. Thank you for inviting me to come. Um, I thought I'd share with you first one of my favourite verses in the Bible, and, and you've just heard that. It's in that passage from Matthew 5, verse 6, where it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled, or they shall be satisfied. If you'll allow me to paraphrase that, blessed are those who see that things aren't the way that God intended them to be. 
And so they hunger and they thirst for, they live their lives as an example of the way that God intended things to be. You know, you don't have to look very far today to see that things aren't the way God intended them to be. This year, an estimated 35,000 children will come into care in the UK. As Tarn said, that's one child every 15 minutes. And currently there's an urgent need for around 8,000 new foster carers across the UK. In England alone, there are 2,000 children waiting to be adopted. These are children who've had a court placement order granted, but no permanent home has been found for them. No family has been found for them. And there are four groups of children that wait the longest, uh, and some of those have been waiting for over 18 months or more uh, to find that permanent family. Just as a show of hands, how many of you are, are siblings? You're, you're one of those groups that would wait the longest to be placed in an adoptive home, uh, just because you have brothers and sisters. Blackpool is no exception to the rule. Uh, as you saw in the figures a few minutes ago, there's a massive need right here, right on your doorstep. At Home for Good, we believe that the church is ideally placed to ensure that every child and young person has a love, the loving home that they need. We know our vision is big and the scale of the problem is huge, but you know, if every church in the UK had just one more family that stepped forward, and the rest of their church wrapped around them and supported them. We could be the solution to the problem for many years to come. Let's be really um, uh, frank about this. If every church in Blackpool had just one family that would step forward and the rest of their church would wrap around them and support them, here in Blackpool, the church could be the answer to the problem for many years to come. So you might ask, well, why the church? Why should the church, why should Christians get involved in this? And my answer to you is this, well, who better? Who better? Throughout the Bible, we're reminded of God's heart for the vulnerable, and particularly for those without a family to love and to protect them. Back in Genesis, the creation story tells us that everything God created, he saw that it was good. The only time in the narrative that we read the Lord God said it's not good was in verse 18 when it said it's not good for man to be alone. Right from the get-go, God's design was for family. The family of God, the, the Godhead, the Trinity, created man in their image. Genesis 1.26 says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. The Godhead, the Trinity, created mankind in their image to reflect who they were. So it's not surprising that in Psalm 68, David writes, A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling, and God sets the lonely in families. I think it's safe to say that when the Bible talks about the fatherless, the orphan and the widow, it's referring to the most vulnerable people in, our, in their society at that time. In a society where there was no safety net or support mechanism for those three groups of people, they would have been without provision and on the very edge. Those who were desperately in need of stability, of care and of protection. Today in our society, children in or on the edge of care very much fit that description and are amongst the most vulnerable people in our communities. Who better to respond than we who've experienced the love of our Heavenly Father who sets the lonely in families? Have you noticed it goes on to say, in his holy dwelling? in his holy dwelling. Not only has God loved us and created us in his image, but, but he's also shown us radical hospitality by wel welcoming us into his home, into his holy dwelling. I used to think that I was good at hospitality. 
both my wife Jeanette and I, we love to cook. Uh, we love to uh, entertain, we love to have people around, we love to go out for coffee with our friends uh, and do all those sorts of things. And, and you could almost uh, uh, hear me saying, come on, how much more hospitable could we be? Uh, but then someone pointed out to me that what we're really good at is entertaining and fellowship, not hospitality. The word biblical scholars translate as hospitality is philos exenos. Uh, which is basically derived from two words, philos, which means brotherly love, and exenos, which means love of strangers. So therefore, sorry, which means strangers. Uh, so in essence, hospitality means love of strangers. That puts a whole different meaning on the concept, doesn't it really? It's not having your mates around. It's actually going out of your way to be hospitable, to, to entertain, to work, to work with, to get alongside strangers, people who you don't know. Then there's that word radical that I used. And according to the Cambridge Dictionary, and I have to say here that if my two children were here, they would now be laughing. Dad is quoting from the Cambridge English Dictionary, all right? This is the guy whose English teacher said, actually, his essays are the most original I've ever read, just like his spelling, all right? So, so anyway, the Cambridge Dictionary... Uh, says that radical can be used as either a noun or an adjective. As a noun, radical refers to someone believing or expressing the belief that there should be great or extreme social, economic or political change. Let me read that to you again. As a noun, radical refers to someone believing or expressing the belief that there should be great or extreme social, economic or political change. And as an adjective, radical means causing or being an example of that great change. So therefore, radical hospitality is about being an example of and a catalyst for great change by loving strangers. Let me read that one to you again, because that's the important one. Radical hospitality is about being an example of and a catalyst for great change by loving strangers. Whoa, that makes the whole thing look very, very different, doesn't it? Who's thinking they're good at hospitality now? Certainly not me, certainly not me. Who better then to respond to the needs of vulnerable children than we who've been shown radical hospitality as God welcomed us into his holy dwelling? I'm going to ask Anne to come forward now and, and, and read us a story that just tells you a little bit about how we've shown a little bit more help to somebody who wanted to show that radical hospitality to children. Donna's story. <clears throat> Less than a month after we were approved, we received a phone call about two-year-old twins who needed a home. They came from a family of six, and sadly, each of the children were being placed in different foster homes. Knowing these siblings were being separated broke our hearts, and we wanted to do whatever we could to ensure that, at the very least, these twins could stay together. We had four hours to prepare, to prepare for them coming, and because we really didn't know very much about the children, those were frantic four hours. We have countless fond memories from the few months the twins were with us. They celebrated their birthday with us and Christmas too. It was the best Christmas ever for our family. One of the twins really struggled with bedtime. We tried everything we could to settle her. But as soon as the pyjamas came out of the drawer, the tears would start. She loved singing, so we started singing at bedtime. I'm not a brilliant singer, but somehow the sing singing made it a bit easier, and they would sing along with all their little hearts every single night. We've remained connected with Home for Good, and the support from this network has meant so much to us. Being in lockdown, it was really valuable to have contact with the team and to be connected with volunteers for support and prayer. 
Fostering these little ones has certainly had its challenges and at times has been exhausting, but it's brought a joy to our home unlike any other. The joy of seeing them feeling safe and content and helping them to meet some of their milestones. Watching them experiencing something like going to the beach for the first time in their lives. This joy absolutely outweighs any challenge or hard day we've had. Thank you, Anne, that's great. So, so let's bring this into land by asking, uh, what can we do to be those who live our lives as an example of the way God intended things to be for vulnerable children and young people. That verse in Matthew 5 starts by telling us, blessed are those who see that things aren't the way that God intended them to be. And so they hunger and they thirst for, they live their lives as an example of the way that God intended things to be. But it finishes with a promise. And that promise is this, for they will be filled for they will be satisfied. If we truly hunger and thirst for righteousness, if we truly live our lives as an example of the way that God intended things to be, then we will see the righteousness that we hunger and thirst for. We will see things returned to the way that God intended them to be. Just think what it could look like if the church lived out the gospel in this area of vulnerable children. Just think about what it would say to the community around us. Just think about the change that it would bring about to the community around us. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Isn't that what we're supposed to be about? Could God be calling you to live your life as an example of the way he intended things to be by stepping forward to play your part in caring for vulnerable children. Now we know that not everybody is called to foster or adopt, but we're all called to respond to God's call on our lives, whatever that might be. And for some of you, it may be to consider fostering or adoption. It may be that you've never thought about it before, but it may be that we just need to have a conversation so we can help you to explore it and help you to work through, is this something? That I could do. Equally, it may be that you want to pray for the work that we're doing and for the vulnerable children and families in, in your community. And we produce a weekly email update and, and a monthly prayer guide that can help you to do that. And I'd love to be able to send that to you on a regular basis. And the prayer guide, I've printed off some copies of this month's prayer guide. They're on my table in the, in the hall through there. Uh, so I'd love to give you one of those as well. It may be that you could invest in the lives of vulnerable children and families by giving financially. It's always emotive, isn't it, when somebody stands at the front and asks for money. But hey, folks, to do what we do costs money. And we rely on people like you to support us. Thanks to, uh, to the support of people like you last year, we journeyed with 1,800 people through our inquiry and family care line. They were able to refer 335 households to the local assessing body to start the process of applying to be foster carers or adoptive parents. That hopefully is at least 335 children that have been taken off of those numbers as a result of the work that we did last year. Please would you consider becoming a friend of Home for Good by giving a, a regular monthly amount. 10 pounds a month could help us to run our weekly online information session for people to get to know more about fostering or adoption. £20 a month could help us to build and sustain that network of peer support groups that I talked about and to resource them to make sure they're a great place for people to come for that support and that care. At the end of the film, Tarn asks the question, what part could you play? Uh, and you'll find uh, dotted around uh, on the seats, etc., uh, some postcards. I've got one here somewhere, he says. 
Can I have them? Somebody hold one up for me and fly it around so that everybody can see it. Brilliant. Well done. Um, and if you, if you fill in there your name, your email address, um, and your postcode, please, that's really important because then we know what part of the country you come from. Uh, if you could fill that in, and then whatever it is that you want to do, just write it in that box on the right-hand side. Say, I want to pray, I want to give, I'm interested in fostering or adoption, I'm interested in a support group. Whatever it is that you want to be involved in, just write that in there and then we'll get you the right information. There's a little box there that says, I want to be kept in touch. Uh, please, that's code for GDPR says I can send you things. So please do tick that box or we can't send you anything, all right? But if you tick that one um, and then... Uh, tick uh, whatever is relevant to you that would be absolutely great please do fill them in uh, even if it's just that you want to receive some regular information to keep you up to date with the work that we're doing so you can pray and then if you bring them back to me uh, I'll take them from you uh, by my table or at the back of church afterwards that would be great Please do come and have a conversation with me. I've got some uh, more literature there, a little brochure that tells you a bit more about us, a form if you're interested in giving on a regular basis. I've got those with me as well. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. Could God be wanting to do that through you? today. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much indeed. So do please have a chat with Mike after the service. Do go up to uh, go into the hall and um, go to Mike's information desk and have a chat to him. It might be you want to give, you want to pray, you want to support others, or you want to Maybe consider going on that journey yourself to consider um, adopting or fostering somebody. But let's really pray that that statistic won't remain. That Blackpool's the worst in the country. Let's make sure that we as a church can do something about it. We're going to sing now as we stand how good it is to sing our praise to him. And this song reminds us that God is the one who gathers families, orphans and refugees into his kingdom. Let's stand to sing. What friend or foe can last before his icy blast? The winds and waves obey his voice. 
yet mercy will prevail. His love will reconcile the nations of the earth to him. Oh, shout for joy to God and sing a new song. Extol the law of life for his provision. And he delights in those who love and cling him, all those who put their hope in God. Oh, shout for joy to God and sing a new song. Extol the law of life for his provision and he delights in those who love and fear him all those who put their hope in God all those who put their hope in God all those who put their hope in God going to declare our faith using this universal um, creed, the universal Christian faith, the creed of the Athanasian creed. And the words are on the screen. Let's say this together. We worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the nature of God. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Spirit, but the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit is all one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. What the Father is, so is the Son, and so is the Holy Spirit. Amen. What an amazing God we believe in. Please be seated as Lauren comes to lead us in prayer. Father God, we thank and praise you that we can meet here together to worship you by our songs and by hearing your word proclaimed. Please help us as we go from this place, continue to praise you. May what we have heard this morning sink deep into our hearts and challenge and transform us to become more like you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for your peace where there is conflict. We pray for safety for those in danger. Father, please raise up leaders across this world who love you and who want to glorify your name above all else. May this world be changed from one where people are turning from you to one where people are turning to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that your heart is for children. Thank you for the challenge and encouragement given to us this morning. Thank you for the work of Home for Good. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, for what it is you want each one of us to do whether that's to foster or adopt, give financially, support a family fostering or adopting, or to commit to pray regularly for children in care and for more families to be raised up to welcome them in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you that you have provided Andrew to come and be a curate here in a few weeks' time. We pray that you would bless him and help him as he prepares for his ordination. We pray too for the rest of the family, Kim, Enna and Toby. Please be with them all as they settle into their new home and church. May they know you with them 
strengthening them as they navigate lots of new things. Please help them to feel at home quickly and to trust you each step of the way. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Thank you, Father God, for the celebrations last weekend. Thank you that we could celebrate the long service and faithfulness of our Queen. Thank you, too, that we can celebrate the Holy Spirit living in us. Thank you, Lord, that because of Jesus, we can enter into your presence. And thank you that you live in us. With the knowledge of this, please strengthen and embolden us to proclaim your gospel to the people we meet. Prompt us to pray for opportunities to do so. Help us to not be afraid, because you are all we need, and you live in us. Thank you, Lord God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son. Amen. Let's stand together as we prepare to share in a peace with one another. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. And peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of a triune God be always with you and also with you. Let's share with those around us a message of peace as we say to one another, peace be with you. Thank you all for your generosity and giving to the mission and ministry of the church here at Christ Church. There are many ways you can give. Of course, you can give by cash, envelope, um, contactless giving, online giving. Um, but uh, we're going to now offer all that to God in this offer to prayers. We commit to him the things that he's given to us that we then give back to him. As we say together, yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Please do be seated. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your holy church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty. And so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we, as we obey his command, Send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, 
until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us into your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. There is strength within the sorrow. There is beauty in our tears. And you meet us in the morning. You're the lifter of the lowly. Compassionate and kind. You surround and you uphold me. And your promises are my delight. Your plans are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. Your will is in the fire and the blood. Faithful forever, perfect in love. You are sovereign over us. Even what the enemy means for evil, you turn it for our good. You turn it for our good.
grotto. No, you've you not forgotten us. Your will is in the power of the Lord. Your plans are still to prosper. You've not forgotten us. Your will is in the fire of the Lord. Faithful forever, perfect in love. You are sovereign over us. Faithful forever. We continue in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the prayer on the screen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice, Send us out in the power of your spirit to live, to work, to your praise and glory. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn. Though the nations rage, kingdoms rise and fall, there is still one king reigning over all. Let's stand to sing.
The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you again, Mike, for being here today. Mike will come and shake hands with you at the door now and please do come and chat to him in the hall. Do stay for fellowship if you're able to. Thank you. Goodbye and God bless. How good it is to sing, to bring your praise to him, whose love and mercy shows no end. He brings the sun on rain, he calls each star by name, the universe resounds with praise. Oh, shout for joy to God and sing a new song, extol the Lord. Of life for his provision, and he delights in those who love and fear him, all those who put their hope in God. He gathers families, orphans, and refugees, and finds the wounds of those who mourn. The humble live denied. The proud he casts aside, his justice faithful as the dawn. Oh, shout for joy to God and sing a new song. Extol the Lord. 